Hey there everybody, it's Nathan Cool with NathanCoolPhoto.com and in this tutorial I want to show how you can make some interactive Photoshop actions. For instance, you might want to have a break at some point during an action so that you can do some manual intervention. Now, as you might have seen on the last two videos here on my channel, I've talked about how you can use actions to speed up your workflow. You might be familiar with them already. You hit a button or you hit the play button in the action uh, window for a particular action and it plays and it does a whole bunch of steps automatically, steps that were recorded. But at some place along the workflow you might want it to stop just temporarily, allow some manual intervention before moving on. Now one thing could be that you break up uh, all those steps that you normally do in your workflow into multiple actions. That's possible, but there's a simpler way to do that that Photoshop allows to make this interactive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show an example using the real estate photography workflow for flash ambient blending. Now if you're not familiar with that, you don't necessarily have to be for this tutorial, although if you're interested in that, I do have a tutorial. There's a link up there that you can grab and just to, you can take a look at that at your leisure and see what I mean by the flash ambient blend. But here I'm going to concentrate on the interactive actions that you can use for Photoshop and especially how that can really speed up your workflow when you're doing real estate photography. And this will then lead up to another video that I have coming up where it's going to show the ultimate action for doing real estate photography because once you see what you can do with this particular step and this particular feature in Photoshop, you're going to be wondering why you've been waiting so long to start using actions. You ready to see how this is done? Let's get started. So here I've got an example of a very typical flash ambient blend. First I shot the ambient shot and then I went ahead and I changed my exposure and I used a, a flash. This happens to be using the Explorer 600 and then I've got then a window pull so that I can see the outside view. And of course this is going to be used as a darkened mode window pull where only the view outside will be seen by the technique used in Photoshop. So all the geometry has been applied so it has the typical uh, stuff that you'd be applying in the pre-processing steps that I talk about in my interiors book. And by the way, if you uh, want more information on that, I do have a link to all of my books down in the description for this video. But let's get into this and show how to make these interactive triggers. So in the typical workflow that we do for real estate, we would open all these layers and edit them in Photoshop as layers. So typical stuff. You've seen me do this on all the other videos described throughout the books as well. So this is going to go ahead and load that up into Photoshop and once it does then we can start working with our trigger. Now because it has been shot in that order where I first do uh, an ambient shot, then I do the flash shot, and then I do the window pull, these layers are already in the prime location to work with. Okay, So and that's also one reason why it's good to shoot consistently in a particular order. If that order doesn't work for you, whatever order you decide, just stick with it. So as in my other uh, tutorials that I showed here on using these actions. I've got a set down here you can see tutorial actions and in there I'm going to go ahead and create a new action by clicking the create new action icon. Now we'll call this one interactive and I'm not going to assign a function key to it. In fact, it's best that you don't because you're going to want to hit the play button at different portions throughout this playback of, the, uh, tr of this action. So let's go ahead and start recording that. So the first thing we would do in the typical part of the workflow is we would, let's say, turn this into a luminosity mode. But we want to make sure that we're really at the top layer. So there's a way you can always make sure you're at the top layer by not having to worry about fiddling around with touching your layers, which obviously if you're using a different number of layers, that could change as you're trying to apply an action. So one way to do that is to press Alt P. So Alt, excuse me, Alt period. Now Alt period will put the the uh, layer selection at the very top. Alt comma would then select the lowest layer and we're going to get to that in a second. But since we have the top layer selected, we'll go ahead and we'll change that blending mode into luminosity. And then I'm going to do a typical 50-50 blend. So I'm going to do a 50% blend here. And of course this is just one way of doing flash ambient as you know. You could put another uh, break in here which I'm going to show in just a second for doing this if you wanted to paint it in. But let's just do it as a 50-50. So that's all fine. Now the next thing is we want to take our darken mode window pull and bring it all the way up to the top. So how do we select the bottom layer? That's that alt comma. Just go 
Alt, comma, and that selects the bottom layer. Now to move that layer up to the very top where we need it, you can go Layer, and then Arrange, and Bring to Front. Now the next steps, we would go ahead and turn that into Darken Mode, and then add a layer mask to hide it all. So we go layer mask hide. Now this is where the interactive portion comes in. We want to be able to stop the action at this point to be able to define where that window is. So what we do is go up here on the action window and at the little hamburger, those three little lines off there, click on it and say insert stop. Okay, that allows you to then put in your own message for a dialog box that will pop up as we play this uh, action later. So we'll do something here, just go, uh, we'll say, uh, do the window pull, define stuff now. Okay, now there's a checkbox down here to allow continue. I'm gonna press that and it's allowing you then an override so that you might have a different uh, type of uh, case so that you can just skip this if you wanted to and keep the, the uh, action going. But I'll show you that in a second what that means. Right now I'm just gonna go ahead and check that, put in my message and click OK. Now, normally if I were really editing, not making the action, but if I were editing, I would define the area for the window pull. But I don't want to do that now because right now I'm just creating this action. So thinking that I already did that, made a stop, and I'm going to continue, what I want to do next is of course flatten this. So what I'd go is layer and flatten image, just like we normally do, okay? And like you've seen then in some of my past tutorials here on using actions, I'm gonna bump this up. I'm gonna actually put in a post-processing bump like we would in Lightroom, and we can do that by applying the Adobe Camera Raw. So I'm gonna bring up the Camera Raw filter, and I can change a bunch of settings now here if I want to, but it also has a presets menu. In here, I'm going to select the common one I use, which is RE Light Bump No Vert. Okay, and you've seen me use this uh, once again, talk about it in the books and in other videos, and I'll just click OK. Okay, at that point, we're done with our action, so you just press stop. That's it. Our action now is completely made. So now let's see what happens when we use this action. Close this out, don't need it. Let's go back to the beginning. Let's open these as layers in Photoshop. Another way to do it, Alt-P, E, O, O, just doing it from the menus to open as layers in Photoshop with all those selected. Nothing different has changed so far. Okay, so once these load up and the top layer will be selected, all I have to do is then select that particular action. So let's go in here so you can see the whole thing as it works. I'm going to select under tutorial actions under that set, I'm selecting interactive. That's the new one that we made. And just like any other action, I can hit the play button down here, which I will. And after it does its initial steps, it prompts me and it says, do the window pull define stuff now? Just like we had defined, remember in that message. Now, if I clicked continue, it would just continue running the rest of the action, but I don't wanna do that. I wanna stop it. So I'm gonna say stop. Don't worry, it hasn't gone away. I'm gonna select my lasso tool and I'm gonna select around that window area. And if I wanted to, you know, I could paint this. It's all those different options that you have for painting in a window pull or selecting in a window pull. I could go in if I needed to and define it maybe a little bit more. Um, if I needed to erase some of it, maybe it you know, got on the couch like it did just a little bit there. Um, so I could do all that fine stuff now. Okay, so that's all fine and dandy. Once I'm done defining that window pull, which is what I wanted the break for, in other words, the stop, I go back to the action window and I hit the play button again. That then finishes off the rest of that action. And you can see also in the history of it, it uh, went ahead and flattened the image and then it did the camera raw filter. At this point then, I would save it. Now, of course, since it has a fireplace, I'd add in a, uh, a fireplace swap for it. And at the end of editing, when this was all said and done, the final image looked like this. 
So the magic of all this compared to the rest of the actions that we were working with on the last two tutorials was that you can insert a stop. By doing that you have a modal dialog box, a dialog box that stays up until you make it go away by hitting one of its buttons. And so the key here is to hit the stop and then the trigger, excuse me, the action is held at that one particular place. You can then do whatever it is that you want to do whether it was just doing the window pull in this case, or maybe you wanted to add another layer for brightness, or you wanted to do whatever uh, you felt you needed to do at that point, any other editing, you just go back then to that action window, press the play button, and it continues on with the rest of that action. So you can see now how you can take this a lot further. So in, in recovering, uh, excuse me, covering some of the uh, past uh, action tutorials, you can see that we can start adding more and more and more to it to where eventually, especially when you start adding Adobe Camera Raw, you can add some of the presets to it. You might start wondering, well, what am I using Lightroom for to begin with? So on the next video, I'd like to be able to cover one of the more ultimate steps to be able to do kind of a one button press to do the entire workflow for for real estate photography. So until then, I really hope that you like this video and that you can use some of this in your photography as well. If you did like this video, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. It won't cost anything, and as soon as one of these videos is posted, you'll be the first to know. Thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, take care, be safe, and get out there and shoot something.